The Canaanite woman did not come to the Lord because she was hungry. She came because her daughter was sick. But the Lord turned the situation to the matter of eating. The Lord did not say, I came as a physician to the children of Israel, and I cannot heal any heathen. I cannot kill dogs. Rather, the Lord seemed to be saying, I came as bread to the children. It's not right to throw the children's bread to the dogs. Although the woman's request had nothing to do with eating, the Lord purposely related her case to the matter of eating to show us that what we need is not outward washing, but eating for the inward nourishing. In his doctrinal arrangement, Matthew put these matters together that we might understand that for the kingdom of the heavens, we do not need outward cleansing, but what we need is for Christ to get into us. Are you sick or weak? Do you have certain problems? Do not try to deal with these things in an outward way. Instead, deal with them in an inward way by eating Jesus. In fact, you should forget about all those things. What you need is not outward washing, but Christ coming into you. The Lord seemed to be saying to the Canaanite woman, You don't need healing, you need me, and you do not need me outwardly, you need me inwardly. You need to eat me. I came as bread for people to eat, to digest, and to assimilate. I would like to get into your being, into your system, vessels, and fibers. I would like to get into your very constituents and become you. Thus, you need to eat me. Don't deal with things in an outward way. Rather, deal with everything in an inward way by taking me into you. As long as I can get into you to nourish you, every problem will be solved. We do not need our rituals or practices. In today's religion, people are following our practices. But God's economy is not a matter of our things. It is a matter of Christ coming into us inwardly. For this, we need to take Christ in by eating Him. When I came to this country, I came with a commission and a burden, with something that I had received from the heavens. Before you came into the church, you never heard a word about eating Jesus. For all the teachings in religion are concerned with the outward washing of hands, not with presenting the edible Jesus to people. But this ministry has come here with a commission to minister the edible Jesus to his believers. I do not care for the opposition and the attack. I know what I am doing. Thinking that I am too bold, some may say, why is this man so bold? Don't we have many scholars in this country, men with doctoral degrees from the best seminaries? I do not care about those degrees. I care only for my burden. I have the strong assurance that I have something of the law from the heavens that is not found today's, in today's religion. I am not here teaching or preaching. I am ministering the edible Christ. This is what the Lord's people need today. You do not need religious washings. Forget about such things. As dirty dogs, we need the eating of Jesus. We need to take Jesus in. Hallelujah! Today Jesus is not on the table. He is under the table. He has been cast off the table by the Israelites, and now he is in the Gentile world. All of us, including me, are dirty pagan dogs. Nevertheless, we can praise the Lord that we are dogs, because the very bread of life from the heavens is now where the dogs are. If the bread were on the table, it would not be available to us. But today, the bread is under the table where the dogs are. We need the edible Christ, who is now so near to us. How I appreciate this section of the book of Matthew. This section reveals that we must forget about outward washing and eat the Lord Jesus. Do not try to change yourself, to correct yourself, or to improve yourself. What we need is the eating of Jesus, healing for the glorification of God. In chapter 15, verse 29 to 31, we have a record of healing for the rec- glorification of God. Due to the rejection of the Jewish religion, the Lord remained in Galilee of the nations as the healing light. He would not go to Jerusalem, the religious center of the Jews, for them to be healed. According to the doctrinal arrangement of the record of chapter 15, healing comes after eating. In other words, the proper healing comes from inward eating. Dietitians say that if one eats properly, 
he will not have illness. Illness comes from improper eating, but healing comes from adequate proper eating. This is a doctrinal point regarding healing in this portion of the word. Further provision for necessities by the compassion of the heavenly king. In chapter 15, verse 32 to 39, we have the miracle of the feeding of the 4,000. Because the Lord had compassion on the multitude in the wilderness, he would not send them away fasting. Christ will not allow his followers to hunger and faint in the way while following him, because the lesson of faith was needed. When the disciples learned that the Lord intended to provide food for the people, they say to him, Where in the desert are there so many loaves for us as to satisfy so great a crowd? Even in the barren desert, the Lord was able to feed his followers and satisfy them, no matter how many there were. The disciples experienced this before in chapter 14, verse 15 to 21. However, it seems that they had not learned the lesson of faith. They set their eyes on the environment instead of on the Lord. Yet the Lord's presence was better than a rich store. The offering of what the disciples had bringing in the blessing with an overflow. The Lord asked the disciples, How many loaves do you have? This indicates that the Lord always wants to use what we have to bless others. Verse 36 says, He took the seven loaves and the fishes and giving thanks. He broke them and gave them to the disciples and the disciples to the crowds. If we offer all we have to the Lord, He will take it break it and give it back to us for distribution to others, to whom it will become the satisfying and overflowing blessing. Whatever we offer to the Lord, however little it is, will be multiplied by His blessing hand to meet the need of a great multitude. In chapter 15, verse 32 to 39, we see the corporate eating. When I was young, I was bothered by the fact that Matthew gives us two accounts that are almost the same. However, if you read these two sections carefully, you will see that the purpose of each is different. The purpose of the section about feeding of the 5,000 is to show us that we are following our rejected king on the pathway to glory. He is able to take care of us. But the purpose of the record of the feeding of the 4,000 is to show that we should not simply eat Jesus as crumbs individually as dirty dogs. We also need to eat him in a corporate way together with many others. Let us all eat him together. In this corporate eating, we do not eat the crumbs, but the whole bread and a surplus remains. Today in the church life, we are no longer dirty dogs eating. Rather, we are proper men eating him in a corporate way. Every church meeting is a time of corporate eating. When we first came into the church life, we came as dirty dogs and we ate under the table. But now we are no longer under the table. We are sitting at the table. Although we are in the desert, we are nevertheless at the table. This is the corporate eating, an eating that is complete. The full bread is on the table of the saved ones. Life Study of Matthew, Message 47, The Pathway to Glory, 6. The book of Matthew often joins things together which apparently have no connection. We see this at the end of chapter 15 and the beginning of chapter 16. Why does chapter 16 verse 1 say that the Lord Jesus was tempted? What is the connection between this and the end of chapter 15? The last thing covered in chapter 15 is the corporate eating. 4,000 men, apart from women and children, were fed by seven loaves and a few small fishes. It seems that chapter 16 verse 1 to 12 has nothing to do with chapters 15. However, when we prop into the depth of the doctrine revealed in 5th Matthew, we see that there is a connection. Being wary of the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees. When it comes to the matter of eating, we must be careful not to eat any leaven. In chapter 16, verse 1 to 12, what is crucial is not the temptation presented by the Pharisees and Sadducees, but the leaven. Hidden within this temptation of the Lord Jesus, there was leaven. 
Yeast is a leavening agent used in making bread. What we see, however, is not the leaven but the bread. When we eat bread, we may not realize that we are also eating leaven, for leaven is hidden in the bread and thus is invisible. Although no one could see the leaven hidden in the temptation presented by the Pharisees and Sadducees, it was nonetheless concealed within it.